Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good evening to Dr. Nawati and my fellow classmates. Today, my group mates and I will be present about Muslim scholars Ibnu Miskawai and his book entitled Tahdib Al-Ahlaq, Refinement of Character. Before that, let me introduce my group mates. The first presenter is me myself, Najiha Binti Subli. The second presenter, Amira Shuhada Binti Nordin. And the third presenter, Wan Nurul Hakima Binti Wan Hanafi. Basically, this is the content of what we will present today, which are Ibnu Miskawai biography, his contribution, happiness as the supreme objective, human perfection, refinement of character, and the implementation in counseling session. Biography of Ibnu Miskawai, his full name is Abu Ali Ahmad bin Muhammad bin Yaqub bin Miskawai. He was born probably around the year 320 Hijrah or 932 Masihi in Arai, somewhere in the area of Tahiran today. And he was died at an old age on the year 421 Hijrah or 1030 Masihi. This shows that he lived during the Buwahid Empire. His region is Iran. His interest is on history, theology, philosophy, chemistry and poetry. However, ethics is the center of his interest. Ibn Miskawai, also known as father of Islamic ethics and the third teacher or Al-Mu'allim al talih This is because he is different from the first teacher which is Aristotle and the second teacher, which is Al-Farabi, where his concerns for ethics is more than the most other studies of traditional philosophy at that time. Therefore, he was named by the third teacher since he was considered the first ethical thinker among the Muslim. He was also a prominent figure in the intellectual and cultural life of his time. Next, he was very much attracted to the philosophy of the famous Greeks such as Plato and Aristotle, whose books were available in a variety of Arabic translations. Miskawa himself worked as a librarian for the libraries of a number of viziers. His role as a librarian to several Buwahids provided him good access to the sources of learning, both Islamic and Greek. He also ministers of the Buwahids during the Abbasid rule. He was not only connected with the Buwahids and their viziers, but also himself gave an intelligent account of their activities and engaged in contemporary events. His effect on Islamic philosophy is mainly concerned with ethical issues. Next is some of his contribution or his book, first al Fawz al-Ashgar, which expounded a metaphysical basis of his ethics. This work is on metaphysics and theology consisting of a philosophical interpretation of the three fundamentals of Islam. Second, Tajarib al-Umam, Experiences of Nations, a famous history where he wrote about universal history from the beginning of Islam. The third is the book that we will focus in today is Tahdib al-Ahlaq, Refinement of Characters, where it is the first major Islamic work on philosophical ethics, focusing on practical ethics, conduct, discusses character, humanity, and contains an original theory on education young boys. This book has seven makala or section, and he wrote this book in his declining years, and this book is most important books on philosophical ethics. Okay, now I will explain about happiness as the supreme objective. 
According to Ibn Miskawai, the supreme goal of ethics is to achieve ultimate happiness. Man is a civic being and sociable by nature. It can be seen through a word man in sign where it is derived from the root word ans, fellowship. So, it is nature for an individual that need other people in their life. Happiness can be attained through companionship, cooperation, and association with others. Therefore, human society is one of the basic conditions of reaching supreme happiness. This is because it helps an individual to socialize with others. There are two levels of human happiness. First, the lower level of happiness where it relates to physical goods, al jasmania. For example, we do activities that give us happiness. The second one, the higher level of happiness, happiness that related to spiritual goods, al ruhaniya. For instance, we performing ibadah to get closer to our Creator, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, according to Ibn Miskawai, the accomplishment of human happiness can be achieved through the accomplishment of human perfection. Okay, human perfection will help an individual to achieve supreme happiness. Human perfection, according to Ibn Miskawai, can be attained with two conditions which are being social and rational. Ibn Miskawai highlighted and emphasized on rational thinking in attaining human perfection. There are two aspects of human perfection which are theoretical perfection and practical perfection. So we gain knowledge and we practice the knowledge. Therefore, combination of both aspects of perfection leads to the accomplishment of happiness. Where, according to Ibn Miskawai, the final aim in attaining human perfection is to practice a practical life. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, now I will proceed to the refinement of character. Uh, first, the definition of character or known as gulu is a state of soul which enables it to perform action without any reflection and deliberation. And there are two types of character, which is naturally inborn character or a natural temperament. And the second one is character that is formed through custom and training, which begins with reflection and deliberation at first, but later will gradually become a faculty or known as malaka and character known as hulukan. Okay, uh, so basically, the second character can be gained and formed from many aspects such as upbringing and environment. Okay. Okay, based on Ms. Kawai's observation, he rejected the view that described character as unalterable since it is completely determined by nature. And he also believed that character is formed and shaped sooner or later through education and learning and through association with good and virtuous people. Okay, uh, so Ms. Kawa believed that everyone can be changed and there is a possibility that we can alter our natural character or to change our character to a good character. And he also trusted in possibility of refining and purifying morals from the evils and wickedness attached to them. Next, according to Ibn Miskawai, character is formed through first instruction and knowledge. Uh, in his book, Miskawai emphasized on education and knowledge is the foundation for character refinement. And the second one is socialization. Socialization with good people will also make you a good person and vice versa. Ms. Kawai said that association with environments such as family and friends sometimes can influence your character. And the third one is habituation of religion, Islamic law and good manners. Because being accustomed to religion, Islamic law and good manners will gradually become our habit if we keep train ourselves with the action. And the fourth one is reinforcement by rewards, admonishment and warning. Uh, so basically reinforcement by reward sometimes can motivate someone to change and meanwhile with admonishment or punishment uh, it is also required to a certain degree and if it is needed to change someone's character. 
Okay, uh, next, number 5, refinement of the soul by habituation to a rough life. So, basically, Ms. Kawai also believed that when someone had adapting themselves to tests and challenges, the soul will uh, will automatically and gradually become a good soul. And uh, the seven one, prevention from frivolous and love poverty and bad companions. Okay, uh, the uh, the meaning of this uh, this statement from Miss Kawai, um, frivolous it means lack of seriousness, self indulgently carefree, or lacking any serious purpose, or known as empty headed person. Why love poetry uh, is known as daydreaming or sweet talker, and bad companies is uh, is um association with a bad friends okay, uh, next uh, the aims of training young boys according to Ibnu Miskawai so basically uh, okay, uh, Ibnu Miskawai uh, really emphasize on training to young boys uh, uh, first because it is not easy for adults to change his character which he has grown up to and been nurtured so meaning that when someone become older, it is even harder to change their character. So for Ibn Miskawai, it is better to start uh, training children, uh, training someone at young age. Okay, the second one is for neglect of training will cause every human being to remain in the conditions he was in during childhood. So here Miskawai believe that if children are not being trained, they will re- they will remain with character with their character during childhood and the third one these good manners which are useful for the boys are likewise use, useful to all the people but they are more useful to the young so it means that um, uh, because um, uh, it's more useful to the young people because if uh, they habituate them to the love of virtues uh, they will automatically uh, grow up accordingly. Then it become not hard for not hard for them to avoid evils, and it is easy for them to follow law and tradition. Okay, and the last one because the soul of boy is ready to accept training. So basically, as we all know, during childhood the soul are not yet tainted by evil deeds. Therefore, there are more acceptance and more easy to observe knowledge and to practice good deeds compared to when we are older. Okay, uh, next methods of training the boy's soul. For Ms. Kawai, psychological aspect uh, is the most important aspect. First, praise is considered one of the most important of these means and methods suggested. Okay, uh, so basically, um, for Ms. Kawai, praising the children is a must and important as this will give them motivation in doing good actions. And the second one is encouragement to rise above the desire for food and fine clothing. Clothing. Okay, uh, Ms. Kawai said that we should encourage the children to have less desire for food and for foods and fine clothing as it will lead to uh, to bad motives. And the third one, he should be trained to admire generous characteristics such as uh, preferring others over himself in matters of food and drink and he should confine himself uh, to what is moderate and seek it. Okay, it means um, it is also important for ch- children to be moderate and sh- uh, should prefer others' need from their needs. Okay, the last one, he should be warned of punishment and made to fear blame for any evil deeds he may demonstrate. So if children make mistake or undesired behavior, he should be warned and punished for them to not repeat the action. Okay, there's more. But if intimidation is employed, then it is best to pretend not to notice, especially if he himself realizes the mistake and try to conceal and hide it. And if it is necessary to reproach the boy for the mistake he had done, it should it should be done in secret. Because disclosing uh, this uh, matters might lead to the boy to be impudent or more rebel. 
and after all of this psychological method uh, if uh, if it doesn't work the educator can change to physical punishment if it is not successful and if it is really needed so basically uh, physical punishment is the last option for for methods of training to young boys i think that's all from me for the implementation there are two cases that we can apply by using ibnu miskawai method first is the cases of student who are having problem with loneliness. According to Ibn Miskawai, the supreme goal of ethics is to achieve ultimate happiness by socialize with other people. Because we are social beings, therefore, counselors need to help students out from loneliness through socialize. Counselor may help the student to achieve happiness by asking the student to write gratitude journal. This can help the student to feel more grateful and embrace themselves. Next, students are encouraged to involve in physical goods like joining sport or socialize. Third, students may increase their spiritual goods like do a lot of sunnah prayer, becoming closer to Allah, and keep praying. Other than that, if the student feel loneliness due to social anxiety, Counselor can also help the student by using cognitive behavior therapy such as cognitive restructuring, role play and giving social skills training. For the second cases of students who are having problem with behavior, Ibn Miskawai believes character is formed and shaped through education and learning and through association with good and virtuous people. Therefore, counselor can help students with behavior problem by using educational method in the formation of good character by using Ibn Miskawai method. For example, first, counselor may give suggestion to student to avoid any association that encourage bad behavior. Second, discipline of the soul through training, moderation, and patience. Third, develop good character through ta'lim and knowledge. In addition, counselor may use behavior therapy like modeling and extinction. That's all from us. Thank you everyone for listening.